Come here. You can shine when the camera's on. Come here. Why do you stink so bad? How do you be that cute and be so stinky? It's talking time. I haven't made a video in months, months and months and months because of the holidays and some health stuff. And I got engaged. See? Focus camera. Ah, oh my god! I got engaged. I'm so happy she proposed me on the beach. The most beautiful, amazing sunset I've ever seen in my whole entire life. It was perfect and beautiful. I'm so stoked. I was so happy. So anyway, I had to share that first because I haven't made a video since I got engaged. She's an engaged bitch. Anywho, I haven't made a video in months and I wanted to talk about something that I've been planning to do a video on for a long, long time. So today I'm going to talk about, uh, huh? my back hurts and I can't think of the words I want to say. So let me just, it's also too hot, but this jacket just looks really cute on me. So I want to wear it for this video. Today I'm going to talk about health and safety in oil painting. There are a lot of toxic materials that oil painters use. So if you have pets or kids or if you have your own health concerns like respiratory issues or things like that, it can be a little nerve wracking to dive in <laughs> Oops, nerve wracking because of all these different materials that you have to use and some of them are a little bit dangerous and some of them have weird metals in them and all that stuff. I'm gonna talk about how I paint safely and share those techniques with you and talk a little bit about the materials that I use because some of them need a little extra care than others. I keep you safe. I keep you safe. There's basically three different kinds of materials that you use in oil painting that have some toxicity concerns. That's your oil paint itself, solvents that you use to like clean or uh, what do you call it? Clean your brushes with it. And um, mediums, which help change the properties of your paints to make them more viscous or dry faster or yada 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 yada. A lot of people think oil paints are super dangerous and super hazardous, and I think they really, really were back in the day, like so dangerous and all full of icky stuff and metals. Nowadays, people actually think about whether or not you're breathing in lead all the time. Most oil paints are toxic. Like you can eat them. Don't eat them, but they're like safe if you happen to accidentally eat a little bit. On the back, ah! on the back of a lot of arts and crafts related materials, you'll see this symbol. Oh, focus. Focus. It says AP and that is for a certification program for the Arts and Creative Materials Institute. What that is, is an association of a bunch of arts and crafts manufacturers that promote health and safety for products. They have a certification program so that materials can be labeled as to whether or not they're like dangerous, not dangerous. There's been toxicology. How would you explain? These are like smart science words that my little brain can't understand, so I'm gonna try and dumb it down for everybody because I need it dumbed down for me. Basically, if there's anything bad for you in here, anything yucky, this association goes through, looks at all the ingredients, looks at all the materials, and will classify it by its safety. So AP means these guys are approved products, very safe, not toxic. There's nothing in here that is going to be harmful to you long term, that's gonna cause any kind of issues. These are safe products and all the paints I use are approved by the ACMI. This is, um, I tend to use Winsor Newton paints. There's a lot, a lot of brands that are. So if you're worried about toxicity in your paints, check out the back of the label. And if it has this AP label, you're totally good. There's nothing in here that's gonna hurt you, your pets, your kids, anybody. You can let your children drink this. Don't, 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 don't. You pour a little bit in Vinny's doggy bowl, she'll be totally fine. I'm not gonna do this. Don't do that. Don't don't eat it. But if, if you do accidentally ingest some of it, nothing's gonna happen. There's nothing there's nothing bad in here. You're totally safe. There is a couple that I use that do have a little safety warning. They're still approved products. It's toxic to aquatic life, so try and keep it out of your environment. Don't go throw it in your backyard. Try and keep it to a minimum. Don't go dumping it in the ocean. If I ever get anything that has one of these on it, even though it is an approved product, it's not like it's still safe for you to use. I still try and keep these ones off my hands. And I think only this one in cerulean blue are paints I use that have that symbol on it. Everything else, so safe. I can douse myself in it. Don't, don't do that. The next thing I want to talk about 
is your mediums. So mediums are what you add to your straight out of the tube paints to either make them flow better or dry faster or dry slower. The things you add to your oil paints so they have the properties that you're looking for when you're painting. There's a lot of 100% natural mediums you can use. For example, linseed oil, straight up made from linseeds. I don't know what that is, but I know it's totally safe. Like I'm talking out of my ass, but like pour this in the pan with a bunch of popcorn and pop it up. It's safe. It's safe. AP. Please don't actually do that. There are other mediums I've told you that are 100% natural, like walnut oil, things like that. And then there's one that I tend to use that has the other ACMI symbol on it, which is CL. Come on. CL. So that means cautionary labeling. So products that have this on it are still safe as long as you use them properly. So this one in particular, it is flammable and requires ventilation because it's got like a it's got a potent smell. <laughs> this is the only product I use that has any kind of cautionary labeling. And when I use it, I take like the tiniest little dab out, so small, and I put it on the corner of my palette and use the, just the smallest amount of it. So I don't have any risk of like inhalation of toxic fumes or anything like that. I keep, keep it so safe. I make sure and keep it off my hands. If it gets on my hands at all, I rinse this, go wash it off immediately. As long as you use it properly, this guy's totally safe. Be careful with it, but it's safe. And then the last thing I want to talk about are solvents. So I've kind of stopped using solvents altogether. They're nice for cleaning your brushes quickly. See, I put them in this little can, and it's this. Odorless paint thinner, some people use turpentine, some people use some other things. But this stuff is gnarly. It's got a bunch of first aid requirement treatments on the back. A red triangle on it to be like, hey, this is poison. Things that are like super fumey, I'm just done with. So a lot of people use this to clean their brushes. They'll put it in the solvent, they'll whisk it around, all the paint just falls off it and sits to the bottom. I have decided to stop doing that. And now I only clean my brushes with brush cleaner, which is 100% safe and so much better for you in the environment. Oh, I hear people talking. Oh, I don't want them to listen to me. Stop. Don't. Mm. Solvents help going from color to color be a much easier process because you just whisk them around, dab them off on a paper towel, and it's totally clean. You can go into the next color without smearing all over the place, getting like a bunch of red and your white. But like it does come with a lot of like toxic fumes and you can totally combat that by keeping windows open or painting outside or things like that. I'm just, I avoid it because it's not necessary for the painting that I do. Instead, I have my little jar of water. Say I have this brush, I have white oil paint all over it, and I wanna switch it to a new color. What I do is I take it, I wipe off as much excess paint as I can on a paper towel, it's super thin. Just wipe as much off of it as possible until it's mostly gone. I take it, I dip it in some water, I have my soap, my brush soap, and I mix it all up in there, just pushing it into the bristles until I have this weird gunky paste of soap and oil paint combo. There we go, look at that. I take that, I wipe it off on my paper towel as well. I switch it in the water again, do another round of swishing it in the soap, wipe it off again on the paper towel. And then once again in the water, ta-da clean brush that I can totally dip in the next paint color I need to use. That is more labor intensive than just dipping it in some odorless paint thinner and going on to the next one, but it just makes me feel better safety wise because this stuff is just so Brush cleaner, the master's brush cleaner. I love this stuff so much. I would highly, highly, highly recommend that. And you can still totally use your solvents to help clean your brushes. I just like that. It's also better for your brushes to just use soap as opposed to paint thinner. Cause like imagine if you were putting paint thinner and chemicals and toxic stuff all up in your hair and then washing it every day, as opposed to just like soap. It's not that good for your hair. 
aka not that good for your brushes. So think about that too. Um, oh, the last thing I want to talk about, I get a lot of questions about, is fire safety. Everyone thinks their house is just gonna spontaneously combust if they have oil painting materials in it. It's not true. Then keep yourself safe, and here's how. Well, here's how you can accidentally set your house on fire. You take a bunch of medium, you dump them all onto a rag, take a bunch of paint, dump them, pour it all into a rag, pile up your rags all in like a box, on top of each other, put them outside in the sun, then you'll, you'll have a fire, guaranteed. What's happening is that as the mediums and the paints oxidize, their temperature goes up, and if they're all layered on top of each other, there's nowhere for the heat to escape. And a lot of these, these materials are flammable, like super flammable. Liquid, crazy flammable. Paint thinners, crazy flammable. So. It's just a super, super dangerous mix. So a lot of people ask me how I dispose of my oily rags for painting and I don't have oily rags because that's not how I paint. I use not very much paint at all when I'm doing my paintings because I put my layers on so thinly. So because I don't use a lot of paint and I don't use a lot of solvents, I just wipe thinly my paint onto a paper towel like this and then I set it out to dry flat if you put solvents on here or mediums on here, if you lay them out flat to dry, there's nothing covering it, there's nothing like flammable sitting next to it. Once it's dry, it is totally good to go in the garbage. You just toss them in the garbage. What you shouldn't do is, what I said before, dump a bunch of oil and medium onto a bunch of rags and throw them in a garbage can. Bad, 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 bad. If you do use a lot of medium and solvent and have oily rags, what you should do is put them in a practically airtight metal container, like this Striplafo tin from Trader Joe's. You put them in here, this lid is nice and tight, so it keeps, argh. if like something does set on fire in here, because it's airtight, it, there's not that much oxygen to fuel the fire, it'll keep it safe and protected, and the metal will keep it from burning your whole goddamn house down. If you're extra worried about it, have something like this. You can use a paint can, just like a tin paint can. Use your brain when you're painting. Use your brain, your house won't burn down, you won't get cancer, you're not gonna die of toxic fume inhalation. Be safe, be smart, keep your windows open, keep things off your hands. I always wash my hands super thoroughly after I paint. Or if I get something like liquid or one of my toxic things on my hands, I immediately go and wash it off. If you are working with toxic things, wear a mask. Don't eat while you're painting. I'm so guilty of this because I like to like have a snack and be working at the same time. Try not to eat and paint at the same time because you could be ingesting some of those little um, unsafe particles of yuck. Don't pile flammable materials on rags on top of each other. <laughs> Be smart, be safe, you're gonna be totally fine. You're good. People think oil painting is this huge toxic thing, but I I just did a bunch of research. I looked at the back of all the labels on all my materials. I read all about things that could be harmful to you when you're oil painting, and I made a process that helps keep me safe. And that's all, like, it's not, it is not difficult to keep yourself safe when you're oil painting. I promise you, you're not gonna kill your dog, you're not gonna poison your baby, you're not gonna poison yourself as long as you're super careful about what you're using. You want brown eyed girl. Me and Baby have the same eye color. Look it, we have the same eye color. Baby, we're sisters. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any more questions about health and safety and oil painting, toss them my way, put them in the comments. I have a website, emilymackieart.com, that I have a couple paintings up for sale on. I'm super active on my Instagram. I also have a Facebook. But my Instagram's where I am active. I don't even look at Facebook. And um, I'm gonna try and be more consistent about posting videos because I really, really, really like making videos. I think they're super fun. Uh, I can't think of anything else. Thank you for watching. Say bye! Bye-bye! Bye-bye! Uh,